Gentrification. Gentrification. Just like my mama used to say, just because we evicted, displaced, removed, thrown out, swept out, it don't mean we move away. It just means we move to the cardboard motel. Uh, Around the corner, under a bridge, on that unseen park bench. That place that it's easy for you to look away. Today's podcast from a poverty scholar is dedicated to all you conscious folks, all you fellow poverty scholars and folks with race and class privilege, housed and unhoused, working poor, barely housed, holding on by a thread, or with too many houses who know that this time just can't continue. And that if we keep gentrificating everyone, There won't be anybody housed except the very rich, the extreme wealth hoarders and land stealers, land occupiers, and uh, capitalist deniers. Today's podcast from a poverty scholar is dedicated to unpacking the notion of first and foremost gentrification and to activating because of a state of emergency, what we at Poor Magazine call de-gentrification. So first of all, gentrification, ruling and basing in the colonizer's notion of buying and selling Mama Earth. I know all you conscious listeners know that's what it is. It's somewhere way back in the original occupation of this indigenous beautiful Turtle Island, uh, the wealthy white land stealers, constitution writers created a lot of paper saying that they so-called owned this part of Mama Earth. Basing in that, they created a whole lot of more paper saying that they not only owned this part of Mama Earth, but could create all kinds of injustice systems and legislations to ensure that they would continue to own and occupy more and more Mama Earth. These settler colonizer laws, you know, are all rooted, of course, in the profiting off of an exploitation of poor people, indigenous people, uh, enslaved African people, uh, and in general, uh, the working poor, migrante peoples having to cross false borders uh, to work for the land occupiers. Anyway, all that said, the buying and selling of Mama Earth which is known as property, uh, took off as a concept, all under the rubric of capitalism, so much so that us poor people are sold a story that that's how we can make it. If we just get enough bloodstained dollars together and buy old houses and flip them as though it was a pancake, we too can be land stealers and wealth hoarders. And so then you have... All kinds of poor people of color thinking that's the way to make it. And that's how we get ahead. And that's how we got ours and got mines. And we'll be safe. And all these other stories about that. Well, the interesting piece about that is, of course, the settler colonizer original OG wealth hoarders made it so that actually the laws and the legislations only benefited them. So even if you have poor folks... Um, raising up and working and slaving in low-wage jobs just to buy a piece of Mama Earth, many times they end up losing it through a whole lot of paper trails. Uh, Referring back to the previous podcast from a poverty scholar about conservatorship and tax bills and more things that look like treaties that stole indigenous land and territory and continue to all across Mama Earth. But that said... Fast forward to now, and you have the creation of the developers, as I affectionately call them, and the speculators with three Ks who say that the answer to everything is to just buy more Mama Earth and build more uh, housing 
that is really ends up being for the very rich. So through a whole series and systems of legislations, the wealth hoarders and the land stealers continue to remove, evict, displace every poor person they get. Now in 21st century Mama Earth, we have less and less of her delicate shoulders to even live on, less and less of her resources to survive on. And so today's podcast from a poverty scholar going out in this state of emergency is also about the state of emergency for de-gentrification. Um, it was important in the times up to now for the capitalists to continue to sell this notion of, you know, property and buying and selling as being the answer uh, to everybody's AmeriClan dream. But now there's less and less space, and so even them are confused, you know, and confused. Uh, and this state of emergency goes out not only to my fellow poverty scholars, to unhoused scholars on the street already at the end of that that lie, but to the folks with race and class and formal education privilege who might have resources, who could help to activate what we have created called a de-gentrification zone. So what is that? Well, a de-gentrification zone is what we originally launched here at Homefulness, the small piece of Mama Earth on Black Arthur and Deep East Wichino Loni land, where we're spiritually and legally taking this small piece of Mama Earth off all of the real estate snaking markets. Uh, spiritually and legally is a very complex process and will be broken down in a, a future podcast, and we've talked about it before, but it incorporates and, and embeds a spirit from all four corners of Mother Earth and permission from First Nations of this land and any land that you're forging it. Um, but the degentrification zone is much more in all-encompassing. It doesn't just deal with one land liberation movement. It deals with a whole vadio, a community, a street, under attack. So right here on Black Arthur, uh, we have our poverty scholar neighbors who currently are facing eviction or the looming threat of what I call the archways of uh, speculation. Every time you see these kind of little arcs come into a poor people neighborhood, beware, because those arcs, those arches in the sky usually mean that the developers are coming. You know, the cavalry of real estate snakes are on their, on their horses. So in this particular case, what does that look like? Like That looks like helping uh, current uh, poor people, neighbors, actually stay in their community. It means helping to have folks who are facing foreclosure fight those foreclosures. And oftentimes, and many times, it means to activate what we've done, which is a reparations fund so that folks can actually pay bloodstained dollars to buy the own, their own homes that they happen to have lived in for years or to pay off delinquent tax bills that are rising because the quote-unquote property values have risen. Sometimes it means, and oftentimes it means, just helping poor people uh, fight their fake evictions. So for lawyers out there, uh, we need legal help at the Sliding Scale Cafe. We meet every Thursday, 10 to 2. And we've been asking for conscious lawyers to set up shop to help people with uh, emergency eviction. We've been doing that ourselves as part of the Revolutionary Legal Advocacy Project with this um, you know, jailhouse lawyer outside of jail without a degree using all my skills to fight fake evictions as well as Leo Stegman and Charles Pitts and Marlon Crump and other members. Um, but in this particular iteration, uh, it also looks like helping just people just pay their rents that have been uh, raised on them, that they no longer have the money to pay. Um, and then lastly, it helps people, or it's about helping folks actually purchase land so that they can build their own homefulnesses, so that they can build their own small communities of poor people, um, houses. 
And this is something that we're encouraging folks to do right now with the Bank of Community Reparations that will be formally released this year. We're asking tech workers to recognize your relationship to gentrification and in that relationship, the ways in which your very presence has caused the rise in rents. We're asking young activists who oftentimes move into neighborhoods like Oakland and say, I'm here to help poor people fight evictions. And by their very presence, they're actually activating uh, the raise in rents, the um, threat of less and less housing, and the um, incentive for developers to develop a neighborhood. And similarly, it's helping small business owners actually stay in their hoods, in their radios. Um, sometimes that means helping them buy their the, the places that they're in. Um, sometimes it means helping them to actually launch um, paleterias or, um, you know, small micro businesses. But on the immediate, um, what we're actually asking people to do in a neighborhood like Black Arthur, like Deep East Ohlone, Lashawn, Oakland, is to look at some of these vacant lots that are on the market right now, right here on this street, and purchase them with the support of a homefulness building crew so that they can be repurposed into um, poor people-led self-determination, into more... Uh, homefulness, a homeless people's solution to homelessness, so that situations like the uh, Peace and Dignity Village faced with quote-unquote city-owned property will never happen because they quote-unquote own the land that they're on. So the last one, too, for those of you who are in neighborhoods and barrios and communities and how do you activate G-gentrification well, the first and foremost one is to by talking to your neighbors, um, by talking to longtime community members and checking in with them and making sure they're safe, to creating degentrification zones in your community. You can invite um, Poor Magazine family members out to um, help you start that in your neighborhoods. And you can also come to our next session of People School, which will be uh, actually January 26th and 27th. Um, last weekend of this month, uh, to learn how to de fuck your own lives. Sometimes that means, as we oftentimes help assist our young folks with different forms of race and class privilege, sometimes that means as simple as going home to the communities that love you, that care for you, that got lost like you did in the away nation which is caused in, in a part and parcel of capitalism, lie, of separation. So that's today's de-gentrification zone uh, story. We're going to be doing another podcast on this um, with some specifics of the settler colonizer laws that you can actually navigate and manipulate to support uh, poor people staying in their radios. Um, but again, I urge you all to consider coming to the next session of People School on January 26th and 27th. And you can find out more about that by going to poormag at gmail.com, emailing us, or the race poverty media justice dot org, uh, and click on the link about the upcoming session of People School to register. Um, as well, you can go on to GoFundMe and look up the Bank of Community Reparations. It's actually under landless people's land and housing movements. Um, and lastly, to just begin unpacking your own relationship to the buying and selling of Mama Earth. Because truly, and most importantly, that's how we're all going to de fuck Mama Earth our lives, our communities, our radios, our towns, our streets, and ourselves.